How good a test is? We always ask this question, especially when we are going to do a test for screening or diagnosing a health problem or as a health professional, we are going to ask someone to do a test. Or a program manager, we are going to introduce a testing in a community to detect a disease. If you are an epidemiologist, you'll be dealing with this all the time. If you are studying epidemiology, you'll be dealing with this. If you are a public health professional, you'll always be thinking about it. Even if you are dealing with the health systems, you'll be talking about it. How good a test is? Are we doing over diagnosis? Are we doing over treatment? Now, when we think about how good a test is, we think about the validity of a test. We think about the reliability of a test. When we think about the validity of a test, we think about sensitivity of a test, specificity, positive predictive value and ne negative predictive value of a test. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about all these. Welcome to Epi Minutes. It's Dr. Kazdi Rahman here. Do you know what test is this? It is called tuberculin skin test. We insert a protein inside our body. We ask the patient, the person to come back after 48 hours to see how swollen that area becomes, how red that area becomes. And then we do a measurement and if the diameter of that red area is more than a certain centimeters, we say that that person might have tuberculosis. Now the question is, how valid is the test? Can it tell the truth or is it saying the truth? How reliable is the test? Does it always tell the same thing? What is being done here? A camera in the airport is trying to identify who are having high body temperature. It's a kind of screening of people for fever. Now the question is, how valid is the test? Can it tell the truth? Is it saying the truth? How reliable is the test? Does it always tell the same thing? Now let's focus on how valid a test is. Validity of a test can be determined by comparing its results with the truth. And truth can be determined by a gold standard. For example, for tuberculosis, the skin test or Manto test is the test of interest. And the validity or DT of which we were measuring in that example. And in this case, PCR can be the gold standard test. Now, when we think about validity of a test, we think about sensitivity, we think about specificity. When we think about sensitivity, we look at the ability of a test to identify the true cases. And the question that remains in our mind is 
what proportion of the true cases are found positive by this test the test of interest specificity it is the ability of a test to identify the true non cases the true negatives and the question that we deal with is deal with is what proportion of the true non cases are found negative by this test of interest when we think about validity of a test we also think about positive predictive value and negative predictive value and when we are dealing with positive predictive value that the question that we are dealing with is what proportion of the test positives are true cases for negative predictive value the question is what proportion of the test negatives are actually negatives or are true non cases now let's have a look at this 2 by 2 table you can see that we are using the truth determined by a gold standard and also we are looking at the results of our test of interest for a particular disease or health condition the first column is those who are really having the disease determined by the gold standard the second column is who do not have the disease in reality determined by the gold standard so 100 are having the disease 900 are not having the disease what happened when we applied our test of interest our test of those 1000 people our test identified 180 as positive and 820 as negative so we are looking at the column and row totals or the margins of this 2 by 2 table now if we go back to sensitivity the question was what proportion of the true cases are found positive by the test of interest let's go back to the 2 by 2 table again what proportion of the true cases so how many true cases were there 100 determined by the gold standard of them how many were found positive by the test of interest 80 so the proportion was 80 divided by 100 0.8 or 80% and when you are calculating sensitivity you will always remember that you are dealing with only those people who are really having the disease the first column who are found to have the disease by the gold standard specificity the question was what proportion of the true non cases are found negative by the test of interest if we go back to the 2 by 2 table again so how many were true non cases now we are looking at the second column which is no disease determined by the gold standard and we will be working only on those people 900 were truly negative they were the true non cases and our test of interest identified 800 of them as negatives so the specificity is 800 divided by 900 positive predictive value what proportion of the test positives are true cases now we are looking at the first row we are just focusing on those who are found positive 
by our test of interest which is 180 of them how many are really positives how many are true cases determined by the gold standard 80 so the positive predictive value or the proportion for positive predictive value is 80 divided by 180 negative predictive value what proportion of the test negatives are true non cases we'll focus on the second row only among those who are found negative by our test of interest how many 820 of them how many are actually negatives determined by the gold standard 800 so the negative predictive value is 800 divided by 820 that is the proportion what about the remaining two cells so far for numerator we have been dealing with 80 which is the cell a for sensitivity and 800 which is the cell D for specificity now what about the remaining two cells the hundred in cell B they are not having the disease but our test are identifying them as positives so they are the false positives and this will result in labeling of those healthy individuals as cases this will result in further testing treatment over diagnosis over treatment involving more cost and burden on the health system how about the 20 in cell c they are having the disease but our test of interest found them as negative which is risky because if the disease is serious is fatal those people will remain undiagnosed so under diagnosis will happen they will not receive the treatment complications will arise they may even die now when to go for a highly sensitive test when the disease is severe we do not want to miss any of the cases and when testing does not involve a lot of cost and also when if someone is found positive the treatment does it does not involve a lot of cost when do we not need a highly specific test when the disease is not fatal when a lot of cost is involved if found positive so we want to make sure that if someone is negative that person will be diagnosed as negative we don't want false positive because that will involve lots of expenditure and when there will be issues of social labeling if someone who is healthy but found positive by a test so for a highly sensitive test when we'll go for that when the disease is severe we don't want to miss any cases for a highly specific test when the it's okay if we miss a few cases because the disease is not that severe but we do not want to falsely label someone as a positive case and also if someone is found positive it will involve lots of expenditure now let's go through this if presence of cough is considered as TB positive then what is the positive predictive value of cough for TB in a community what is the positive predictive value of cough for TB at a TB clinic in this case we are using cough as a symptom which is a proxy of a kind of 
test, we are using this symptom to identify someone as having a TB. Now, what will be the positive predictive value of cough for TB in a community? If someone comes to you, 100 individuals come to you with cough, what proportion do you think will really have tuberculosis if having cough is considered as having tuberculosis? It will be higher in a TB clinic as compared to a community. Why? Because the prevalence of tuberculosis among those who are gathered in a TB clinic is much more higher than that in a community and positive predictive value depends on the prevalence of the disease in the population where you are applying the test. Now let's consider tests which are not giving you just yes no result which are not just saying you that yes you have this disease or you don't have this disease for example when we measure our blood sugar it is not saying that yes you have TB or you do not have TB you have diabetes or you do not have diabetes it gives you a measurement of of blood sugar concentration or it gives you a measurement or concentration of uh, sugar in your blood now using that you need to determine or the healthcare provider need to needs to determine whether that individual has diabetes or not we need to come up with a cutoff in this in the photo one the a we can see 20 individuals the black dots who are really having diabetes identified by a gold standard and another 20 individuals who are non-diabetics now in to the right side of figure a the right figure a on top you can see that we are using a cut off which is quite high what is happening as a result using a very high cut off out of 20 only five are diagnosed as having diabetes when we are using that a very high cut off for blood sugar level to consider someone as having a diabetes. On the other hand, because we have used a very high cutoff, most of the negatives are found negative. So the specificity is actually quite high, which is 18 over 20, which is 90%, but the sensitivity is 5 over 20, which is just 25%. If we use the low cutoff, the bottom left figure, you can see out of 20 who are really ha having diabetes, 17 are diagnosed as diabetes as well. So the sensitivity is 85%. Specificity, among the negatives, only six are diagnosed as negatives. So the specificity is very low, which is 30%. And in real life, the individuals having the disease and non having the disease they're all mixed up like you can see in the figure d and even more in real life when we do not have any gold standard we do not know actually who is having diabetes and who is having not we'll just need to rely on our test result in that case we we'll need to be very careful if we use a high cutoff for a test of continuous measurement because this is a continuous variable because when we get the blood sugar level it gives us a, a, a level which is a kind of continuous variable it is not yes no it can increase it can decrease if we use a high cutoff you need to think about those two we'll lose sensitivity we'll gain lots of specificity if we use a very low cutoff we need to keep that in our mind that because we are using a very low cutoff, the sensitivity will be high, but the specificity will be very low. That means we'll get lots of false positive. If we get use a very high cutoff, the sensitivity will be very low. That means we'll get lots of false negatives, but false positives will be very low. All the negatives will be negative because the specificity will be very high. 
the same thing now if you look at this so milligram per 100 cc that is the unit for blood sugar level and you can see that the top one is for those who are without diabetes and the bottom one is those who are really diabetic and you can see that if we are using the very low cutoff that is at 80 blood sugar level is 80 milligram per uh, 100 c uh, cc then most of the po diabetics are, con are diagnosed as positive as well when we are using the cutoff as 200 milligram per deciliter we can see that all the negatives are negatives which is good highly specific but sensitivity is very low and we are losing some true positives and we are not getting all the positives as positives so there is a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity and one thing that we need to remember that we can deal with we think about sensitivity and specificity of a test when we are going to apply that in a population to identify who are actually having the disease and who are not on the other hand so we think about it before applying the test we think about sensitivity and specificity before applying the test for positive and negative predictive value it is mostly the clinicians who think about it after someone has done the test and has received the result and ha has come to the clinician with that test results then the clinician will need to decide yes this person is positive so does that person really is really having the disease this person has come back with a negative test result does that person is really not having the disease so positive and neg negative predictive value we need to think about it after we have received the test results and it is mostly the clinicians who deal with them on the other hand sensitivity and specificity it is the public health professionals it is the policy makers who think about it even it is the clinician who think about it before someone goes for doing them before asking a population to do that before asking individuals to do those tests the other thing that we always think about when we think about how good a test is is reliability of a test so far we have been talking about validity of a test and when we were dealing with validity of a test we talked about sensitivity specificity positive and negative predictive value but when we think about how good a test is we also think about the reliability of a test what does that mean how much you weigh you have a bathroom scale is your bathroom scale reliable what does that mean it means that is it giving you the same weight all the time is it measuring your body weight in a similar way all the time I'm not saying whether it is measuring your body weight correctly but is it giving you the same body weight if you do that in the morning in the afternoon in the evening that is the reliability it is is it telling you the same thing all the time that is the reliability it's not about whether it is telling you the truth those two questions we dealt at dealt at the beginning whether it is is it telling the truth and is it telling you the same thing again and again so whether it is telling you the truth or not that is all about validity sensitivity specificity positive and negative predictive value now is it telling you the same story again and again same thing again and again no matter whether it is true or not that is the reliability or repeatability of a test and it in terms of reliability or repeatability of a test variations can happen and that can be intra-subject variation intra-observer variation inter-observer variation 
Let's think about an example with measuring blood pressure. If you measure the blood pressure of an individual in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, you will get different measurements. That is the intrasubject variation. If someone measures someone else's blood pressure twice in the same sitting, that person may get different measurements for slightly different measurement techniques maybe. That is the intra-observer variation. If you measure blood pressure of, of, of a patient and then your colleague also measures blood pressure of the same individual at the same time, there can be some difference because of the measurement variation or the blood pressure machines that you both are using. That is called inter-observer variation. Now, if we combine both validity and reliability of a test, and we go back to the first question, how good a test is. Look at the first one, the dartboard. What do you think? It is reliable, it is telling you the same thing again and again, but it is not telling you the truth, so it is not valid. Second one, yes, it is telling you the truth, and it is telling you the same thing again and again, so it is both reliable and valid. The third one, it is neither reliable, because at different times it is giving you different measurements, it is not valid, it is nowhere near the truth, most of the cases. I hope I could give you a clear explanation of how good a test is and how we determine that. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you all stay well. We'll talk again. Bye.